Hi, welcome to Little Steps Live. We're over here in Hong Kong. We are going live with some new guests, which we're all going to be hearing about in just a second. Uh, just a few reminders before we get started. Uh, Little Steps, as you might already know, uh, we are a media website um, for parents across Asia. We have six different cities, and one of the things that we like to do is um, tell you about the inside stories behind businesses and more about um, what they can do for you as uh, moms, dads, kids, depending on what uh, the topic is. So Facebook Live is brilliant for that, and today's topic is going to be diving into just that. Uh, Little Steps has been going uh, deeper into the world of health uh, over the last year, and one of the big areas that we want to focus on is women's health which today's topic is just about that. Um, we are going to be discussing physiotherapy, which um, many of you also know is uh, one of the, the core things that, uh, that you need pre and post pregnancy, but also as you move along, especially if you're active, uh, active females, um, injuries, pain associated with that, we're gonna talk about all those things with our guests today. So, a few reminders before we get started. We are lives, which means that you can ask questions throughout this interview. If you've got anything that you hear about, you wanna know a little bit more about, um, just go ahead and type in those questions and we will get, get right back to you with the guests that you are asking the question to. Um, another thing that you might want to know about is our upcoming Facebook Lives. How do you find out about those? Um, that's quite easy. You just go to our Facebook uh, page, go to the event section, and you'll see our upcoming Facebook Lives to find out more about um, what we've got coming up over the next couple of weeks and over the next couple of months. So I want to go ahead and start, uh, start today's topic. So I do want to um, tell you a, a little bit about the guests, but I think it's always best to hear from the guests themselves. So um, we are here in Hong Kong. Uh, we're here with Pro Health Sports and spinal physiotherapy. Um, they have two locations in Central, um, so you'll be hearing a little bit more about those locations and some of their future plans. Um, but before we get started, I wanna go ahead and have our guests introduce themselves because each of them specializes in a little bit something different in the physiotherapy world. Do you wanna go ahead and start? Yeah, so I'm Dina and I work in Jardin House Branch, so um, I've been working here since uh, 2004. So been a while, and then uh, so I'm um, seeing like everyday patient like with like back and neck pain, but my specialty is a little bit more towards the uh, uh, related to my background because um, I was a gymnast before, so I would like to see people like doing like yoga, like dances, they like have like hyper mobility joints and. Particularly people like women with like really active lifestyle, I would like to see them like a lot and like. Like two years ago, I also like study a little bit more about women's health physio. So, and I was pregnant last year, so I have a little baby, nine months old now. So, would like yeah. to share more with all the new mothers out there. <laughs> Covers a lot of different areas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how about yourself? Yeah. So, I am Maritza, and I work. I work here in a Wingway building. Um, I've been uh, working as a physiotherapist for twenty-one years. But I've joined uh, Pro Health uh, since 2019. Um, I've been focusing on uh, women's health most in the past uh, four years. Um, so I see a lot of uh, prenatal and postnatal clients. Uh, most of them um, complain of back pain and uh, sacroiliac joint pain and um, postnatal incontinence. So I work hands-on, and I do a lot of um, uh, incontinence-related uh, conditions. So um, I also work with uh, clients with scoliosis, because uh, having a scoliosis also is one of the root cause of uh, back pain. So a lot of uh, women who didn't know they had a scoliosis experience early onset of back pain when they get pregnant. Oh. So um, when I identify that and I point it out to them, uh, I immediately teach them how, what to do, how to stretch, um, and uh, what to use in order to maintain a pain-free pregnancy. That's right. Good to know. How about yourself? <laughs> Hi, I'm Mel. I'm uh, from, originally from South Africa, but I've been um, in Hong Kong for 21 years and uh, practicing physio for 25 years. 
Um, I'm a little bit of an all-rounder. I'm a sports person, so I do a lot of sports, uh, sport injuries. I'm currently working with the Hong Kong Netball Elite uh, squad. Um, I'm a mother of three uh, children, so I have also a lot of experience in pelvic dysfunctions for a woman pre and post pregnancy. Um, my other uh, field of expertise is I work with um, post surgery, so um, vasectomies or abdominal surgery, um, and I also uh, do a lot of lymphatic drainage for people when they've had cancer or they've had um, different type of uh, lymph um, problems. Excellent. So yeah, as you can see, we're going to be covering a lot of different areas of physiotherapy specifically for um, females. I think the, the most common ones that I certainly see amongst my friends are the needs around pre and postnatal um, physiotherapy, but also the sports injury. But what's interesting is that we're also going to be talking quite a bit about um, the other areas that we don't think about um, that are very important to females. So do ask your questions because it is very personal. Um, a lot of the, the questions around physiotherapy, I thought it was quite interesting about the scoliosis. Yeah. A lot of people come in thinking it's just back pain That's and it's true. actually something a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. So it is an important topic um, and um, definitely ask questions along the way. But also uh, know that they are offering um, a discount for Little Steps readers. So we will be putting that information in the comment section uh, to make sure that if you do want to come in and just chat with these, these, these individuals one on one, um, we will have that um, discount that you'll, you'll be able to look into as well. So I think the first question is quite a good one. <laughs> um, can you tell us just a bit about, I mean, a bit about what exactly a physiotherapist does? I think maybe you can take that one. <laughs> yes, yeah, so every day, of course, like patients come into us like mostly because they're suffering from pain. So it's always, it's more of a pain they yeah. come in because of pain specifically. Mostly I would say like in our setting because we see like musculoskeletal condi mm. condition or like suffering from like sport injury. And then like, so of course like, we help us help them through like with a like thorough assessment and then we see what the problem is and then give them like manual treatment or like some like ultrasound, like electrotherapy, or of course, most important, like, we would give them like exercise that can help them through with the rehabilitation process. Okay. Yeah. And when you say manual, for people that are new to physio, um, there's manual treatment, there's machines that you use, yeah. and then there's exercises that you do in the studios, and, and then obviously at home as well. Mm -hmm. um, is that how you would break it down, or is there anything else that we should note? Manual meaning, what does manual mean? Yeah, or well, we would do like, like of course, like some soft tissue technique if they come in like really, really tight muscles. Yeah. We'll help them to break it up before they start the stretching or what other exercise will make the it's instant relief or uh, yeah, it does. So it's also helping through with like get into the exercise easier. Other, okay. Otherwise, it's probably quite hard for them to start off. Like just like getting too much pain in there. Got it. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Anything else you want to add on to what physiotherapy? We're going to get a little bit deeper on that, but anything else that you want to add on to? Just one on one, what a physiotherapist does. Uh, I think we, the physios, um, we the first part of the healing process. So we we like to use a lot of manual therapy with touch because people respond well to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you reduce your pain, you feel better. You're able to move more. So I think physio is just the first first line of attack when you have got um, an injury, just to get your body moving again. Excellent. Also, um, we tend to educate our clients, mm -hmm. so explain to them, you know, the root cause of the problem, and then give them home exercise. So the the more they know, the you know, the better they are at doing this. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess it's one of those things that if you see them regularly, <laughs> that's good. It's good, but at the mm -hmm. same time, if they're doing the exercises at home yeah. and they don't come in for a while, that's also mm -hmm. great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to actually split today's uh, discussion into three areas. Um, those are going to be pre- and postnatal physiotherapy, which is, uh, is, is really important for um, moms-to-be. Um, also discussing things to watch out for. Um, I think there is, a, there is quite a bit, uh, I think with my first baby, I did post-physiotherapy because I didn't know as much about pre-physiotherapy, but my second child, I did pre and post, it made a huge difference in the labor as well, but also just in the, in the recovery. So I think that's quite an important topic that we'll be covering there. Um, the second area that we're gonna be talking about is the post-surgery rehabilitation, uh, which we'll get into some of those pain areas um, and more of the specialization of what this clinic does. 
Um, the third area, which is um, really geared towards active lifestyles. Many of us hike and bike and run around Hong Kong uh, and are very prone to injury and pain, especially as we get older. Um, <laughs> But we'll be talking about that specifically around females as well. So a lot of great topics to cover. Um, let's dive first into pre and postnatal um, physiotherapy and, uh, and just the issues around that. So I would say the, the first question I have is what are the most common complaints that you see around, well, I guess pre and postnatal is quite, yes. quite different in terms of yeah. the complaints that come in. Yeah. So yeah. what are the most common complaints pre and postnatal? I think the most common um, Three most common uh, prenatal complaints are back pain, um, sacral iliac joint pain, uh, which we can show a picture of the of the, the spine. spine, yeah, and then uh, calf uh, cramped or tightness. Um, all of that's related to pregnancy, mm. and then the three most common postnatal uh, complaints also back pain. And then something we call mummy's tummy, which is a sacking tummy, uh, and then incontinence. Okay. Yes. So we'll get into all those lovely things that we get to deal with <laughs> pre and post babies. <laughs> um, what is the role of the physiotherapist in pre and postnatal uh, physiotherapy? Yeah. So uh, the role of the physiotherapist in the prenatal uh, would be a lot of um, education. Mm. So it will include advice on uh, the proper posture while pregnant. Um, most uh, women, when they're pregnant, they tend to overarch mm. the back. Uh, they stick the bum out, and it changes the whole biomechanics when they walk. So if you can educate them on how to correct that and um, realign their body and posture, it actually minimizes a lot of back pain. Mm. And then um, we tend to advise on a proper sleeping position. So um, they all know, most women all know that when you're pregnant, you're not supposed to sleep on your back. So they tend to sleep on their side. But when you sleep on your side, then your knee is you know, twisted. So uh, we tend to teach them to put pillow in between the knees and uh, wedge in between the tummy or uh, one more behind the back to fully support the body uh, while sleeping. Um, we also give advice on the uh, active birthing position. So if they choose to do natural delivery, um, you know, if they have any idea of uh, how they would, they would like to do it. Um, actually, the worst position to give birth is lying on your back. Mm. So a bit of discussion with the gynecologist as well, see if they will allow you to give natural birth in any other position than, than lying on her back. Mm. Um, if so, then we could um, advise uh, what, what would be a better position to do it. Um, then there's more advice regarding uh, how to prevent incontinence while pregnant and after delivery, which is uh, very common right after delivery mm. because as you know, a whole baby just came out, so your pelvic floor is loose, and if you cough or sneeze, you might have a bit of um, leakage. So what to do uh, in order to prevent that? Um, we also strengthened the core muscles, the back muscles, in order to prevent back pain while pregnant. And um, uh, besides that, we also like to um, facilitate um, uh, get an idea of their hobbies and lifestyle so that we can help facilitate uh, the return to it. Excellent. Lots to think about. Yes, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I think it is nice to have those um, tips along the way. I remember yeah. when I was pregnant, one of the tips was every time you saw a stop sign or the color red, you know, straighten up or, <laughs> you know, tuck it in. You know, so those little tips along the way are quite helpful help. as well because um, you do forget. You yes. just kind of get into comfort mode. Yeah. Um, so, Mel, I've got a question for you. So, during the pre and postnatal um, physio visit, the first visit, what would you say that, that a person could expect? Um, first, we'd probably take a history of how your pregnancy went and whether you've had previous pregnancies or not and how they went. Um, we would then do an assessment of, your, of the um, pelvic bones and where are they and how have they been um, manipulated with this, uh, carrying the, while carrying the baby. Um, we'll check the integrity of your abdominal wall. Um, 
and that kind of gives us an idea of what we need to do. Uh, we may do a bit of adjustment, we correct your pelvic bones, um, we would then uh, educate you on what the pelvic floor is, what the um, core muscles are, and then proceed into gently a gentle program uh, to get the all those muscles activated again. So, and then we you progress from that to higher intensity exercises. That would be, but in the on the initial, it would be more just about explaining a lot. It's a lot of like mind body reconnection yeah. too, right? Yeah. I think when you're pregnant, you forget um, you forget how to activate those muscles, or you're activating the wrong ones. So yeah, yeah. So that's quite quite important. Um, so, so th we're going to jump a little bit over. Um, a lot of people are active during pre and during pregnancy, and then right after they have a baby, they start moving straight into activity again, whether it be yoga or running, hiking, um, and sometimes their body does things that they, they didn't expect, I think one of which is runner's incontinence. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe if you could tell us a little bit about um, that, uh, yeah. just to, one of the other lovely things to expect yes. <laughs> and what to do about it. That's right. So uh, runner's incontinence is uh, when you leak every time you run, and um, that's uh, when you run, there's an intra-abdominal pressure uh, pushes down on the pelvic floor. And so the pelvic floor are the muscles that hold um, your organs, such as the bladder, the uterus, and the bowel. Um, so those muscles are actually very thin. So when you push, you keep running and you push down on it, it actually does not, uh, it's not strong enough to hold in, and so then you leak. Um, women who tend to have, uh, have given natural birth, they might encounter um, runner's incontinence or women who had multiple births, so probably two or three, then they will notice that every time they run or chase the bus or maybe go hiking, they might uh, wet themselves. Yes. So um, they would come in and you would help them, how long does that typically take to Correct, would you say? Mm, so, just so it depends on, yeah. on how severe it is, uh, how uh, weak the muscles are. Mm. So uh, we have a machine, which is a biofeedback machine, that can tell us uh, how strong the muscle is. So you will, you will take the history, as Mel uh, just said, that you have to take a history of pregnancy. So how many babies, were they all naturally delivered? Um, how old are they? Um, their lifestyle? And so then you get to assess how strong the pelvic floor is. Mm. And then uh, it's a manual assessment, so we actually test the muscle. And then we have a, a machine that actually will give us a number of how strong the muscle is. Okay. So it's very objective as well. So it's not just, oh, you are weak. Yes. But it actually gives us a number. Oh, you're, you you're are very weak. weak. Yeah, <laughs> you, you see the number there. So then there's another machine, which is an electric machine which um, helps the client to engage the muscle, to reteach them mm -hmm. how to use the muscle again. So every time it, she feels the electricity, she will you know, contract the muscle mm -hmm. at the same time. And that's a, probably will build up from, from five minutes to 20 minutes. So then usually 20 minutes is quite tiring. Yes, yeah. yeah. 20 minutes of working, the pelvic floor is quite tiring. But as they get better, they actually, you know, become stronger and stronger. And then um, they will notice that they can go back to the running without a problem. Um, how about the muscular skeletal treatments? <laughs> Took me a while to uh, pronounce <laughs> that. <laughs> that is muscular skeletal treatments. Um, yeah, how about, how about other uh, areas such as that? Um, so yes, a physio can help with um, all type of musculoskeletal problems such as uh, neck pain or tennis elbow or we, what we call the mommy's thumb mm. from lifting the baby multiple times a day. So um, yes, uh, we can help help clients with all of all those things. Those okay. So I am intrigued. What is mommy's thumb? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually heard heard that one before. So, yeah. but you you've said it a few times. So can you maybe tell us what that is? So mommy's thumb. Yeah. Basically, it's a fact the tendon that runs at the back of our thumb here. So a lot of time, like when the newborn mom like carry the baby, like like hundreds of days up and down so mm -hmm. they get made into like a wrong posture or physically they may be actually they are not strong enough over the shoulder over the backs after being like 
resting for like 10 months of pregnancy and don't need to do anything <laughs> and they suddenly go back to the baby and say phew they don't actually have the strength to lift up the baby like hundreds of times every day so end up they get like strain and like injury to the tendon there so they have like they have swelling they even feel painful to just lift up the newborn baby mm. so uh, what we do there so like from the assessment we find that this problem is still like an acute like inflammation like that so we give up like like treatment like ultrasound to ease off the inflammation first and then of course it's anything like tight from the back that affect them they won't be able to get in the right posture they probably like show us the a proper exercise to re-educate those muscles to work in a proper way again mm. or or the like correct posture for the everyday lifting. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. Okay. So we, we cover quite a bit on the pre and postnatal physiotherapy side. Um, is there anything to add? And I just want to ask if there's any other questions that have come in around pre and postnatal uh, physiotherapy and some of the areas there. Okay, great. Um, so just a reminder that if you do have questions, if you watch this after we go live, um, these lovely ladies are available for questions afterwards. And so just put your questions in the comments and we will be in touch with you in terms of um, getting those answers to you as well. So those are for the people that are watching it after it goes live. Um, so we're gonna carry on. We are splitting this chat about physiotherapy um, into three different topics. So I just wanna remind those that are just joining in, we are over in Hong Kong. Um, we are diving into the world of women's health and specifically physiotherapy. Um, we're here with Pro Health Sports and Spinal Physiotherapy and um, we just covered pre and postnatal physiotherapy. Now we're gonna move into the second area, which I don't know a lot about, so I'm quite uh, interested to get into this a bit more. Um, this is for breast cancer survivors, um, post -mas uh, mastectomy and abdominal and cosmetic surgery. So really around that uh, post-surgery physiotherapy. Um, and we're gonna dive into a few topics around that. Um, so again, ask your questions and share with anybody that this might be relevant as we move along. So, major surgery, Ugh. <laughs> um, what, uh, physiotherapy is a huge part of, of the recovery side of, of surgery. Um, what would you say are the major issues around um, post-surgery that, that people come in? Uh, the, probably the biggest one is that uh, people fear that they're going to reopen the wound. Yeah. So they're very fearful of, of moving, so they move less, and the, more, the less they move, the more painful it is because they're um, shortening everything. Uh, the second um, problem is that you guard with the, some muscle become guarding muscles and so instead of um, standing up straight with a good posture you'll hunch forward and in that hunching you just shorten up everything and if you stay in that position the muscles get used to that uh, being in that position so it gets harder and harder to move. Um, we find this a lot with, um, so as we were talking about um, or we said mastectomies, abdominal surgery, even um, after uh, heart surgery, any surgery in the, in the front region of the body, people tend to guard it and to, because it's painful to open it up. So you get a, a forming of scar tissue, you get shortening of the muscles, um, and this then um, causes pain and causes discomfort when you're laying down, when you're sitting. So um, physio can make a big difference um, in loosening up these mu the, uh, the, the scar tissue and opening up the muscles. Um, it also, it's somebody to give reassurance that yes, you can move, yes, you can sit up straight, it's better for you, yes, you can do this movement and we help you progress. So going from a restricted movement will help you progress to get your normal active movement back. A lot of confidence building then mm -hmm. as well, yeah. mm -hmm. I can imagine. Oh. Um, so when patients come in, I, I guess my first question is, is it typically the doctor re uh, refers um, that they should go to physiotherapy or is that more of does it come from the patient themselves or is it just assumed? Um, unfortunately in Hong Kong it's um, they in the private sector there aren't very many multidisciplinary um, teams so the doctor seem to do the surgery and just expect the patient to do well to know what they, to do and they think their surgery is really good so they don't expect the patient to have any okay. complications so we have a few doctors that will refer because they have seen that actually the physio works well with the um the sur surgery um to get a patient going back to their normal activity a lot quicker but a lot of times i do get people that it's kind of they've now googled what's the last resort because they've got no um, improvement and then they'll see oh this physio can help and they'll come in mm. um, sometimes um, 
Dr. Google. <laughs> Dr. Google works. <laughs> um, but uh, often it is better for the patient to come earlier because then you can stop any adhesions forming and you can get well. them moving you know, a, lot, a lot quicker. Oh, that's um, good, to, good to know, actually. It's a good prep uh, uh, before you have major surgery. But even yeah. breast augmentation, so um, that's another um, area where you can get quite a lot of scar tissue and um, it's not well known that the physios can actually help uh, get get moving so that it, it feels more natural. Ah, excellent. So how do you assess patients when they come in? Um, well, you you have a look first at uh, what surgery that they have had mm. um, and what their restrictions are and what their pain threshold is. And from there you um, check their range of movement, um, what is it affecting, and then you determine well, what is the most important, is, is it pain or is it restricted movement? And then you go from there and how you tailor the um, specific treatment. Okay. And then the term uh, self-management, I heard this term, what, is, what does that mean? <laughs> That's what the doctors think everybody should be doing. <laughs> okay. But in reality it, it is not, it, it, is a, it forms a part of the um, treatment. Okay. But you have to know what you, what you are going to be doing or what are you self-managing. So in many instances the physio will help to regain movement and then give you a home exercise program massage or um, exercises to maintain the movement that they um, that we've recovered or to um, improve your strength or to um, improve your uh, self-confidence in, in, in moving so self-management is what we can only see you once or twice or three times a week but every day you need to be doing something to maintain and that's not just with um, abdominal uh, or um, breast surgery, that is actually with any... Um, Probably with life in general, right? <laughs> if you're active yeah. as well. And right? people think, oh, they go to the physio to fix them. We can help you, but in actual fact, you have to help yourself to... to so that's the self-management. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, and then what are, what is the typical rehabilitation methods after breast cancer um, surgery um, and other surgeries for that matter? What, what are the... What are the typical methods that you use? Um, so, so soft, we talk about soft tissue massage, which is massage. So mm. uh, getting the scar tissue movement, moving, um, getting the circulation better, uh, gentle stretching, opening up, um, the, getting the skin moving, getting the muscles moving. So it's, it's a lot of hands-on um, techniques and then um, getting the patient to learn to do it themselves and then teaching them exercises to stretch and then exercise to strengthen. So, excellent. Okay. okay. So um, that's uh, going to wrap up that second topic that's all around um, post surgeries and um, looking at some of the areas around women's health um, in that area. Are there any questions um, around surgeries uh, that have come in? All right. Great. Um, we are going to be moving into our third topic. But again, for those that just joined us, just a couple of reminders. We are talking about women's health and physiotherapy. We are over here with the lovely team from ProHealth. And um, we have just covered pre and postnatal uh, physiotherapy. We've done um, post-surgery, post-major surgeries. Um, and now we're gonna be moving into the sports and active lifestyle. And I have a lot of friends that I can tag on this one. So this one is great for people that have these, uh, yeah, the active lifestyle of Hong Kong, the hiking, the biking, the running, um, yeah, I think sometimes when you're younger or you just don't notice things and life goes on in a busy city, but um, there's a lot to learn in that, in that area. So um, that is what we're going to dive into. Um, yes, next. So what advice would you give to people before, um, in terms of advanced training, we're talking marathon runners, triathletes, mm -hmm. what would you give them as advice from a physiotherapist before they start their training? So. Um, of course, if you've been like really advanced, like runners and hikers, like I, I'm sure like everyone will know you ne need to do warm up before you really go into a hot. That's that training. stretching thing that. <laughs> yeah, like we don't really actually just focus on stretching. Yeah. We have to really get your body warm. Mm -hmm. So like when your muscle is warm, when your joint is warm, your ligament is warm, you are less prone to injury a lot, a lot. Okay, if you're like cold, like we got probably a lot more like strain injury on the winter time, like when people are just like go out and then hit like a hardcore like trails and then they just like end up with like strain over there and mm. then, like, they may be more easy to roll their ankle even then. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, apart from warm up, so of course we also advise our patient probably not to like 
bring into a really big increment for every week training so you do a little bit by little so you won't do like something big like one weekend and you do Just nothing the other way, yeah. yeah and then or maybe even a month and then you pick up something again so um probably we could bring it up like like well, during like a quarantine time like all the gyms close down right so we, we end up having a lot a lot more patient when the gym open up so because like everyone just rush into the gym and try to get things done like we haven't been done in like months. Oh uh, yeah. We're just doing too way too much. Oh work. interesting. So they, they uh, also get things like that too. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be careful with that one. Um, how would you say, I mean, uh, this, the difference between a serious injury and a minor injury and when do you go and see a, ther a physiotherapist, mm -hmm. how, would you, how would you describe that? Um, so sometimes if you get like an injury, probably you were able to see like two, three days and how see the things go. So like maybe the pains actually get better and the, like the swelling will actually eventually go away after you ice it a little bit, rest it a little bit. But if it actually doesn't get any changes after like two, three days, what we normally call it about the acute phases. Mm -hmm. So you probably need to see doctor or see someone to really head into the, like see what happened up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Good to, good to know. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as the uh, sports injuries, what are the most common sports injuries that you that you do see here? Sports injuries? Sports, inju mm -hmm. uh, sports injuries or active injuries. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably around Hong Kong, the knees are quite a lot. So yeah, because like, <laughs> <sense. laughs> like people go high. Don't mess with the knees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this probably like number mm -hmm. one if we deal with like runners and yeah. also like the high heels. Yeah. Yeah. So many up and down heels. Mm -hmm. The body yeah. from the knees. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's like really accessible with all the trails in Hong Kong. So we got probably a lot more knee injury. And then the next come up probably like shoulders. Okay. Yeah, these two like the most like like kind of like mobility joints that will And is that from is that from running as well or is that no, from not, not necessary. It could be like uh it sometimes could be from just like everyday life you've been like getting into like oh, yeah. posture and then you yeah. even get like shoulders issue. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thanks to look forward to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, how would you typically treat these injuries? Um, let's just yeah, the knees, for example. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll come in like again. We'll take a history, a thorough history, like what happened up there. Do you have any like recent injury from there, or uh, like you, you pick up anything that like you change your way of training that will contribute to the problem? Okay. Okay. So because like letting the patient know what's the problem is is really really important because okay. like they have to go out there and able to tell what's problem they have actually had that and then we'll give them treatment and then so they will understand more why they're so important to come to see us or they, they go back home to do the exercise like yeah really prescribe to them okay yeah. mm -hmm. so I guess a lot of it has to do with when the injury happens it's good to just take note of exactly what happened mm -hmm. what's in the lead up what have you done mm -hmm. what have, you know just as much information as that you can that yeah. you can provide yeah. is very helpful yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, also preventing them, in the future yeah a lot of them they just go oh no i didn't do anything <laughs> when you know what it, happens yeah i know when you take into it it's like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i haven't trained in three months and yeah. Just <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah um so lower back i know that's a that's a really common one um in terms of if you i guess yeah what should you do if you do injure your lower back because that mm -hmm. that that would be, I guess that would be the most common back injury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, genuinely speaking, uh, uh, heat is good for muscles because heat helps the muscles relax. So I would probably tell patients that if they have in, um, a spasm or injury in their low back to uh, use heat, apply heat. Um, in the old days we used to say bed rest, the bed rest, bed rest, but now um, that's uh, been shown not to be the case. Yes, do it, but don't overdo it but you must try and get movement so small movements lying on your back doing pelvic tilts rocking bring your knees up to your chest one leg at a time just getting movement because with when you get movement um it just loosens up the rest of the muscle so you don't have so much guarding so probably heat pack some painkiller if um if you have some from the doctor mm. or you have a pan panadol or something like that um and then just getting gentle movement gentle stretches gentle movement oh, good so the ice pack is a no-no uh, some people find ice packs better and in this heat, but um, ice pack normally works better on joints, uh, tendons, um, that type of when you have an injury, when you've gone over on your ankle or there's swelling. But generally, um, maybe if you've fallen on your, or you slip, you can put ice immediately, but then mostly mm -hmm. with um, uh, spasms in the muscles, heat generally works, um, works a lot better. Okay. 
So uh, one area, and I'm surrounded by it right now, um, the Pilates side of physiotherapy. Uh, I think we're gonna take a little uh, run over here to see how the machines work, but I'm curious to understand how Pilates and physiotherapy um, interact, because um, it is a big part of it. Um, so maybe you can talk us through that, and then maybe we can take a look at the machines and kind of understand a little bit more about how they work and how they contribute to some of the some of the areas that we've talked about today. Yeah, sure. So um, Pilates is uh, designed by Joseph Pilates. Uh, it's a physical fitness system that uh, involves into uh, proper body alignment, uh, core strength, and uh, muscle balance. So uh, in the machine, which is called the reformer machine, mm. uh, it was designed by uh, Joseph Pilates in the 1920s, and it's a system that uh, um, involves uh, some ropes, pulleys, springs, and a carriage. So uh, this uh, reformer machine, um, when you do uh, reformer Pilates exercises, uh, it really focuses on the, um, the concentration, uh, control, precision, uh, the flow, and the breath. Um, because it's a very uh, low impact but high intensity exercise, it's actually suitable for pregnant women. Mm -hmm. So I use uh, reformer Pilates exercises with all my pregnant uh, clients. Um, we do prenatal, prenatal Pilates, uh, pregnancy Pilates, and postnatal Pilates as well. So also for patient with surgery, uh, pil reformer Pilates exercise is very suitable as well. Um, when you do regular uh, reformer Pilates exercise, you notice that your posture will improve, your core strength will improve, your balance will improve, and your, even your mental health. So here we have the reformer machine, which um, Are we, gonna we could take, go take yeah, a look at it. Take All right. a look at it, and then I will have my colleague Mel to be my model. So this is the reformer, reformer machine. So in this position, we'll start in this position doing a double arm um, pull down, yes. So then one knee points forward as, as the client pulls down and the breath work will be exhale as she pulls down. So this is strengthening the core muscles and focus and then precision. So you notice the knee points forward every time she pulls down. Okay, very good, excellent. So this is a second position where she goes on her knee and she pushes again this liver arm. This is a knee stretch where she goes and, and creates her, um, contracts her muscle, which is the core muscles at the front right here and her buttocks muscle. Also her hamstring and thighs are also working. So you notice that every time she push back, she's breathing out. So a lot of control and precision. The flow is very nice and even. And the breath is also very nice and even. So it's very smooth. And you can imagine that even a pregnant woman can do it without a problem. And the third exercise is a little bit more advanced. So she's on her knee 
and she's engaging her core muscle to maintain balance and proper alignment. And she's using her triceps muscle, which is her arm muscles, to pull on the pulley and her rope. So this is a little bit more advanced because if you don't have enough core strength, you might fall forward. So it's very nice work, very nice flow. And every time she pulls up, she's breathing out. Excellent. You got your workout in. There you go. You're done. Just put that back in. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's, um, we're going to wrap up here. Uh, thank you so much for telling us all about the, a little bit about what you do. There's a lot that you do. Um, but in, the, in those core topics uh, around uh, women's health, a few things that I just want to touch on, and of course, if there's some questions that come in, we'll, we'll hit those up as well. Um, but Pro Health Sports and Spinal Physiotherapy um, is offering Little Steps Readers a 20% discount. Um, the way to get that is actually, we'll put the information in the comments, but you'll need to call in. So they've got two locations in Central. Uh, call in, mention Little Steps, and uh, book an appointment with any of these little, lovely ladies or anybody from the team, um, and you can get your more personal questions asked um, around pre and postnatal therapy, female issues, injuries, sports injuries, things we've talked about, or really anything that's going on with your body. So um, that's, uh, that's a wrap here. Uh, do we have any questions before we head off? Um, I have one that kind of came up uh, on my, in my brain. Um, the difference between osteop osteopathy, uh, physiotherapy, and chiropractic. Factors. Can you maybe give us the, the, the core differences? I'll go for the difference. Okay, I'm sure you get this, right? <laughs> yeah. um, Chiropractors manipulate, so they will uh, you they will um, put you in a position where they can click your joints, so you okay. can manipulate. So it's a thrust. It's a it's a it's quite a um, hard mobilization okay. of a joint. A physiotherapist. We will mobilize the joint and we do a lot of um, soft tissue work and we do a lot of exercise. So we believe that you need to chain, strengthen up, you have to change the muscles to, cha to maintain the, okay. the, the movement. And I think an osteopath kind of fits in between. He okay. does a little bit of soft tissue and he does a little bit of, of ah. manipulation. So it's, uh, we all work towards the same thing. It's just how we get there is a little bit Yes, different. okay, interesting. All right. <laughs> I don't know if you agree with yeah. that. That's okay, that. you, have it, you have it all summarized yeah. there. It's, yeah, sometimes you can go in circles, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody that, that joined us today. Uh, just a reminder that um, if you are tuning in after we go live, you can still ask questions, you can still interact. We know where these folks live, so we can uh, get those questions answered for you. Um, and yeah, share it with uh, some, some individuals that you think would be great. Um, and watch the space. They've got some very cool things coming up. Uh, we can't talk about it, so you're going to have to watch the space. But it is going to be around female health, uh, specifically female health. So um, stay tuned. Uh, you'll, hear, you'll hear about that shortly. All right. Uh, signing off. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>